Hello service people, in this video we will talk about the brand new feature Lambda Function URLs. You may have heard about it, but at the beginning of April, AWS released the Function URLs, a new feature that lets you add HTTPS endpoints to any Lambda function and optionally configure calls. Let's see what is Lambda URL and how you can leverage it in your next project. Chances are that if you're using Lambda in your project and you're exposing an endpoint, you're using API Gateway or an application load balancer. Sometimes though, what you need is a simple HTTPS endpoint for a webhook or for a form submission. For this task, you don't need to understand or study how to configure an API Gateway and the endpoints. What you want, it's a simple way to have a public endpoint and that's exactly where the function URLs features comes in handy. Let's have a look now from the AWS dashboard. So this is the uh, dashboard where you create a function. I'm going to call it my new function URL. Here I choose runtime node and I have to click on the advanced settings. And as you can see there is this new enable function URL. So if I enable the function URL, the first thing that is asking me is the authentication type. You can choose an IAM authentication, so only authenticated IAM users or roles can call the function URL. You can set none if you want the URL to be public accessible, and this is the case when you have, you know, a web hook that has to be called from a third-party service. Here there is like um, an information saying that even if you apply the non-authentication, Lambda is going to create a resource-based policy that lets, that lets everyone from the internet call the function. And this is this is doable because the, we are creating the function with a role that can add the permissions to do that. You can actually see the view policy statement here. Next configuration is the uh, configure the course. So if you're not like familiar with course, it's a um, policy that lets call your URL from any region. So you have, you, let's say you have a website example.com, you can like force that a specific URL can be called only from that specific region or from all the region. In this case, if we enable course, you can set that any region can call your function URL. Of course, you can uh, change this configuration depending on your use case. In this case, I'm going to just check the course and allow the allow any region to call my function URL. And that's it. Next, next thing I have to do is to create a function. And what I'm going to get is a function URL that you can see here on the right hand side. I can copy the function URL and actually if I do a get on the browser, I should get like hello from Lambda. Yeah, there you go. This is like the sample function that I have in here. So if I change this, hello from Enrico, I click deploy and I reload in here, you will see the difference. So you can see like how fast it is to try out the Lambda function with function URL. You don't need to configure API gateway or, or other stuff. We can also see from the dashboard that if we go on the configuration, there is the new tab function URL. And here you can see all the, the configuration we have done in the creation time. So this means that you can add the function or URL even after you have created the function. So you can go in here, add the function URL or edit it or delete it depending on the use case. Another cool feature I want to show you is that you can map the function URL to specific aliases or versions. If you don't know the difference about aliases and version of, of a Lambda function, check out the video that I'm going to link in here. It should be on the top right. It's very important to understand the difference between versions and aliases because it's useful in it's useful to split production, test environment, development environments, these kind of things. So in this case, I've created like two aliases, one prod and one test. And what I can do is that if I navigate to the prod one, for example, I can go in configuration, function URLs, and create a new function URL. And this URL is gonna be linked to a specific uh, alias of my function. And this is great because it allows me to have multiple URLs for different aliases or versions of my Lambda function. So we've seen how to create the function URLs from the dashboard, but of course, AWS lets you do it also from infrastructure as a code services. From AWS, there is CloudFormation. And here I can, you can see an example on how to add the function URL to a Lambda function using CloudFormation. Personally, I use the serverless framework, and now I'm going to show you an example on how to do it with the serverless framework. All right, here is like a sample, a Lambda function is just returning, hello, I am a Lambda function URL, but the important bit is the serverless YAM file. And from the serverless YAM file, you define the service framework version. Remember for that in order to have the function URL to be 
supported by the serverless framework, you need to have the latest version. If we go on the functions block, you can see where you can define the function URL and it's here. As simple as that, you add the URL and then you can decide to configure course or not. In this, in my case, I'm configuring course. And now the last step is to deploy the function. So I'm going to do serverless deploy. Pause the video for a second. All right, the deployment has finished. As you can see, there is the endpoint in here. If I copy the endpoint, we can try out on the browser. And now I'm going to also navigate to the AWS dashboard. So we're going to see what has been created. Let's first test it. Yes, I'm allowing the function URL. There you go. We have the body. And then I am going on the function. I have deployed my function on US East. And he, there we go. Lambda function URL tutorial dev lambda function URL has been created. And here you sh we should see the function URL. Yes, we have it here. So service framework has created the function URL for us. So now that we've seen how to create the Lambda function and how easily it is to create it also with the infrastructure as a service tools, CloudFormation or Service Framework, let's see for which use cases it can be helpful. So I believe that the first one is when you have to prototype an API. So if you are if you are like on a early stage of a project, you have to just do the prototype of your API, you don't want to, you know, learn or you just want to try out very quickly your function without creating an API gateway, deploy the stage and all the process you have to do with the API gateway. You just check a box and you have your public URL accessible from everywhere and you can test your API. It can also be useful when you have like web hooks and you are integrating like third party services. You need a public endpoint with without any, you know, specific configuration. Function URL is great because it lets you have this public URL that can be called by uh, any service in the world. So web hooks is a great, I think, use case for function URLs. Another one is when you have long running tasks. So let's say you have like tasks that takes more than the default timeout of the API gateway, which is like 30 seconds. With function URLs, the timeout is going to be up to 15 minutes, which is the timeout of the Lambda function. This, of course, if you have long running tasks, maybe you want to think about another solution, maybe decoupling these tasks. But is it like an opportunity or an option that you can use with uh, function URLs? And now, what are the limitations of function URLs? We've seen just the pros. Now let's see some cons. So the first limitation I think is that you cannot specify routes or payload formatting options. So this means that like your endpoint is available from for every HTTP method. It can be a get, it can be a post. You cannot configure that with function URL. It's going to be available for each HTTP methods. Another one is that you cannot configure for now custom domain names. So you cannot put your domain name is going to be a domain from AWS, something like you can see in here, a URL ID dot Lambda URL dot the region on AWS. For now, custom domains are not supported. Maybe they're going to add it in the future. Another one is that you can only have IAM authorization or public endpoints that are not authorizers. So if you have like, you know, a login and you have like custom authorizer, you have to go through API gateway. And of course, only syn synchronous invocation is supported. It's not uh, the asynchronous one is not supported for now. Last point, function URL pricing and drum rolling is free. This is great. This is like the best thing ever. Free is great. So function URL is free. It's included on the uh, pricing of your Lambda function. All right, that's all for the function URL introduction. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you actually have tried this new feature. And I'm going to work in the next weeks to create a Lambda function versus API gateway, when to use one, when to use the other. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more serverless content. And thanks again for watching.